Lady Fi Engineer. Today, we're going to be talking about preventing flash flood attacks. In DeFi, we're building more and more decentralized protocols every day, and more and more DeFi applications, which is great because we can get closer and closer to being truly bankless. However, in the past 30 days alone, we've seen five different attacks damage more than a million dollars each, totaling over $30 million. We as a community need to learn and grow from each one of these events to stop them from happening in the future. So, in order to learn how to prevent these attacks moving forward, we first need to know, what is a flash loan? A flash loan is a loan that is only valid when it is loaned and repaid within the same block. And these flash loans are great tools to use in DeFi. However, they can be used as a tool to exploit current vulnerabilities inside code. It's not the flash loan that's the issue. It's the vulnerability in the code and the flash loan is just used to leverage and pump the holes that are already in the code even bigger. Flash loans can be used to crash or spike the price of an asset, as well as leverage your buying and selling power within the same block. Using these features in our past events, luckily we've only seen one or two different types of it. We've currently seen these exploits follow one of two patterns, price oracle manipulation or re-entrancy attacks. Let's talk about price oracle manipulation first. Let's look at some really simple pseudocode here. We want to get the value of a token from a decentralized exchange, and we want to send somebody some governance token based off of the value of that currency. You see the issue? Somebody could take out a flash loan, crash the price of that currency, or spike the price of that currency on that exchange, and totally ruin the smart contract. It's working with an oracle that doesn't control it, a price oracle in this instance. Luckily, we know there's an easy way to fix this. We want to use a decentralized oracle network or a decentralized chain link network to get the price of that asset so that our smart contract is now impermeable to these flash loan attacks. Your code is going to be in this gist here. We can choose our aggregator with our decentralized price. So if you're using pricing data or any type of data at all, a decentralized network of chain link oracles will protect your application <laughs> from flash loan attacks. Now let's talk about re-entrancy attacks. Re-entry attacks are a lot trickier. The code in front of you looks even more harmless than the last code we looked at. A re-entrance or re-entry attack is when a contract makes an external call to an untrusted smart contract that can act maliciously before the initial function finishes. Hopefully you can see how that can be an issue. But in this contract, it doesn't look like there's anything weird going on here. We're just sending an amount, right? Well, smart contracts also have what's called a fallback function. It's a function that gets called if none of the other functions match the given function identifier. Luckily, newer versions of Solidities and newer fallback functions have parameters to mitigate some of these attacks. Anyway, looking back at this function, what's wrong? What's the deal? We look at this line here, we're making a call to an external function that we don't know. This one could be malicious. And we see that when we call it, our balance hasn't been updated. So if they call it again before our balance gets updated, it'll still show that they're allowed to withdraw. So they could keep calling this function before the balance gets reset to zero. Now this is a super oversimplification of a re-entrancy attack. And because it's so simple, this is how simple the fix is. Boom, fixed. Now, if it re-enters this function, the balance will properly be set to zero before the external smart contract is called. After this video, you can learn more and contribute to preventflashloanattacks.com to learn more about the history of how these exploits actually happen. If you follow some of these tips, you won't end up like <laughs> So look, low-key, obviously Ethereum is an emerging community and we're still getting better and we're still growing, but at this point, like, uh, projects are getting hacked all the time. Just yesterday, Pickle.Finance lost $20 million from their evil jar attack because they pushed code after they got an audit. But I feel like all these projects even get audits and they don't get audits for Oracle attacks. They don't get audits for re-entrancy attacks. So it's like, why are they even getting audits? Or maybe the audit companies aren't auditing. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And I know there's, there's obviously the third type of attack, which is kind of like this pump and dump, this economic attack, right? And some people argue that that's just the way the system was intended to be. And, you know, I'm fine on whatever, but we just need to figure out some standards right at this point it's it's nuts you know if you, there's no way people are going to be able to adopt this and we're going to scale this community where we want it if protocols keep losing 20 million dollars or five million dollars or however much money we lost the last month 
in any case, I just want to say there's obviously a lot going on, and there's obviously a lot more to it, and I kind of really simplified some of the attacks, but those are really what we've seen, uh, these reentrancy attacks. The Dow attack was this recursive attack. Uh, that was the OG OG. Uh, we've seen tons of these Oracle hacks. At this point, it's honestly like, come on. If you're getting Oracle attacked in 2021, <sighs> Stokes Reed too, though.